Typhoon Chaba made a landfall off the coast of China's Guangdong province on the afternoon of July 2nd with violent winds and torrential rains. It entered the neighboring Guangxi province that night. The storm has now caused flooding in 14 rivers in China that have exceeded the warning level. With the typhoon landing, massive tornadoes also appeared in Guangdong province. The tornado was so fierce that the roofs of some factories were ripped off. China's Ministry of Water Resources announced that from July 3rd to 6th, heavy rainfall would lead to a significant water rise in rivers, such as the Xijiang and Beijiang in the Pearl River Basin, the Yangtze River Basin, the Dongting Lake System, and the Huai River Basin. Among them, some tributaries in the middle reaches of the Xijiang River are experiencing super floods. On July 2nd, torrential and heavy rains fell in western and eastern Guangdong, most of Hainan and eastern Guangxi, which triggered more serious flooding. The streets of many cities in Guangdong province became a sea of water. In some places, rain mixed with mud and sand poured down like a waterfall. In some cases, the accumulated water was two meters deep. The situation didn't abate until July 5th. The city of Ingda, previously the hardest hit area by the Guangdong floods, is now flooded again with a dire situation. One of the local reservoirs has been opened to release the flood water and all the stores in the city have been closed. Those who are familiar with the local flood situation have brought their own rowboats to get around. Also, according to Chinese official media, a reservoir in Hainan province also released flood water in an emergency. Typhoon Chaba entered China's inland Hunan province on July 4th with tropical depression intensity. Although the moisture conditions were weaker after its landfall than when it was at sea, Chaba still maintained an open moisture channel. In addition to the typhoon, which brought heavy showers on its northward journey, it also interacted with other systems to bring heavy precipitation. This is what a city in Hunan province looked like as it was soaked in water on July 4th. The Pearl River runs through Guangdong province. It's the second largest river in China after the Yangtze River. With a basin area of about 440,000 square kilometers, it is six times the annual runoff of the Yellow River. Speaking to the Chinese media, the General Executive Deputy Commander of the Pearl River Defense, 
said that since late May this year, the Pearl River Basin has been hit by seven consecutive floods in Typhoon Chaba. It's rare in history. It has experienced the test of the great flood of the Beijiang River, and the flood control situation is extremely serious. That is to say, compared to a few years ago when flooding occurred once a year, the flooding of the Pearl River has multiplied eight times as of July 5th. The flood situation in the Pearl River system is actually a snapshot of the major water systems in China. So why has the flooding in China deteriorated to such an extent? We have checked some data from historical files, especially from Dr. Wang Wei Luo, a water expert living in Germany, and will present a brief analysis here. Rivers in China have a flood season and a dry season every year. During the flood season, there will be more rainfall and the water in the river will rise a little bit. It's not as bad as the dry and rainy seasons though. Historical data shows that China's major floods are not that frequent. For example, before 1949, when the communist regime was not established in China, the Pearl River Basin flooded on average once every 24 years. However, after 1949, it flooded about once every three years. In recent years, floods in China have become more frequent. We have seen massive floods in 2020 and 2021. This year, in early July, the flooding in many southern provinces, including Guangdong province, has shocked many. Why is that? The primary reason is that the CCP has no respect for nature in its ideology. Specifically, the increasing frequency of major floods in China is due to two main factors. The first is that the natural environment has taken a back seat to China's economic development. Rivers usually have floodplains. Many rivers have floodplains that are several times or even dozens of times wider than the riverbed. And they serve as real sponges that can accommodate the rising water during flood season. Over the past 30 years or so, there has been a steady encroachment on the beaches with farmland and cash crop plantations. For example, in Shouguang City, Shandong Province, China's vegetable capital, many vegetable greenhouses are built on river beaches. In the 2018 flood, about 200,000 vegetable greenhouses were destroyed by the flood, which directly affected vegetable prices in northern China and even the whole country. Another factor in the flood is the unpredictable release of local reservoirs, which we will discuss later. On the other hand, China's real estate economy is soaring and every inch of land is considered gold. How many homes does China have? There is no official data. But in 2019, the Southwest University of Finance and Economics released a report entitled The Health of Chinese Household Wealth 2019. It revealed that there were already 1.1 homes per capita in China and estimated that there were 65 million vacant homes at that time. A river in the eyes of businessmen and government officials represents the value of Lakeview housing with amazing profits. The overdevelopment of real estate, coupled with the overdevelopment of industrial areas, has taken over the land that originally belonged to the river, making the river increasingly narrow and dangerous during the flood season. The second factor is the reservoir. From the time of Mao Zedong, the CCP brought in from the Soviet Union the idea of building a large number of reservoirs and dams. Believing that they could both prevent floods and combat droughts, 70 years later, the CCP has built nearly 10 dams with many reservoirs on virtually every river. Many of the world's most famous dams, such as the Aswan Dam in Egypt, have a capacity greater than one in relation to the annual runoff of the dam site, meaning that the reservoir can hold all the water that flows in a year. The reservoirs built in China in the 1950s were mostly built in the same ratio, but later the ratio became progressively smaller. By the time the Three Gorges Dam was built, its total reservoir capacity was only 9% of the annual runoff. When the capacity of reservoirs is insufficient, it becomes necessary to release flood water to protect the safety of reservoirs in local cities when the volume of water increases. If the reservoirs at each section were released at a reasonable time, the flooding in China would not be so bad. Unfortunately, in China, a country with a high degree of centralized power by the CCP, it's not always so.
In the last episode, we reported that Ingda City in Guangdong Province was hit by a major flood, with the highest water level being four stories high, and some viewers were skeptical. So let's use it as an example for analysis. To the north of Ingda City is Xiaoguan City, which is the upstream city. In early June, the reservoir management staff in Xiaoguan City, for some unknown reason, didn't release the flood water. And when the water accumulated to a deep level, flooding the famous local temple, they had to release the water in an emergency. Such emergency release of water is very destructive, as we can see that many homes were washed away when the reservoir was released without warning, not because the quality of the homes was poor. Some Chinese experts have calculated that the speed of such flooding is five times the speed of natural water flow, and the destructive force is the square of the speed, which is 25 times. Since mid-June, Xiaoguan's reservoirs have opened their gates several times to release flood water, which rushed to the downstream city of Ingde. The city of Ingde also has a reservoir dam. If the floodgates were also opened, then the city wouldn't have been so devastated. On the southern edge of the city, downstream of the city, there is the Feilai Gorge Dam, which is the largest reservoir in the Pearl River system on the Beijiang River but its capacity is only 5% of its annual runoff. With the water from upstream continuously coming down, the water level of this dam has accumulated to over 27 meters, although it was officially reported to be 24 meters. If we add the height of the secondary dam and sandbags, it is estimated to be more than 27 meters. Downstream of the Feilai Gorge Dam is the metropolis of Guangzhou, the capital and the largest city of Guangdong province in southern China with a population of over 13 million. The county government of Ingde dared not open the dam gate to release water without permission. Faced with the rising water level in the city, the municipal government didn't act and neither did the provincial government dare to make a decision. So Ingde became submerged by the rising water. Chinese officials reported on June 21st that the water level in the city had exceeded the warning level by 8.57 meters. But you know, the actual situation is often more serious than the official announcement. The reservoir capacity of the Feilai Gorge Dam is only 5% of its annual runoff. When the reservoir is full, the entire county is flooded. It is just not possible to hold the water and not let it out. On June 20th, China's Minister of Water Resources and Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the National Flood Control and Drought Relief Headquarters personally visited the Feilai Gorge Dam. And at his command, the dam opened 15 holes at 4.30 on June 22nd. Where did the flood water go? Of course, it didn't go to the metropolis of Guangzhou. It went to a flooding area on the Pajiang River, an eastern tributary of the Beijiang River. That is, about 400 million cubic meters of flood water was sent to flood the peasants' farmland and their houses. In China, the peasants have the least voice as a group, and in many cases, they don't even have the ability to make a voice. In the history of the communist regime, serious floods have occurred many times, but we haven't seen major cities such as Beijing and Shanghai flooded, and most provincial capitals haven't been flooded. Except for Zhengzhou, the capital of Henan province, which was an accident in 2021. The government, in order to avoid compensating the flood victims, has used various explicit and implicit methods to release floods without notifying the public so floods can be classified as natural disasters and the people will have to pay for all the losses themselves. Now not only are the floods getting worse, so are the losses incurred. Why? Well, it has to do with a mistake by the Xi Jinping government. Before the Xi Jinping government, one of the most powerful units in the flood relief effort was the hydropower troops of the armed police force. In the 1950s, when the troops were evacuated from the Korean War, these soldiers were integrated into a water construction team and were sent to participate in a number of large water projects. In Deng Xiaoping's time, this team was transformed into an armed police force called the Hydropower Unit, which had close ties with the military. This team was relatively experienced and had large mechanical equipment. 
So when the floods occurred in China in the 1990s, this team was leading the rescue effort, with the military being the main force on the scene. Xi Jinping, who prefers the former Soviet model, established a new emergency response department in China in 2018. Following the Soviet Emergency Response Department, this department is mainly composed of China's Production Safety Bureau and the Fire Brigade within the Ministry of Public Security. Now most of the rescuers Chinese see in the news are firefighters, who drive fire trucks out to respond to disasters and are best at moving people around in rubber boats. But they lack professional knowledge about the construction of water dams and levees, and they don't have the expertise to equip themselves properly and operate some large mechanical equipment. Of course, in the official Chinese media, it is the Chinese Emergency Response Department that is always the center of attention, the star of the show, as opposed to the victims of the disaster. At present, there are 187 ships, including 13 with high-risk goods, stranded at Zhangjiang port. There are also more than 1,100 vehicles and more than 2,300 passengers stranded at the northern shore of the Qiongzhou Strait. After the typhoon weakens, we will organize the stranded ships to leave the port in a safe and orderly manner. The original hydropower unit was disbanded and a state-owned engineering company was established in its replacement. In 2021, when the Zhengzhou floods happened, the Anung Group, which finally came in with large sump pumps, was an organization transformed from the original hydropower unit. To sum up, there are three elements concerning China's emergency response mechanism for floods. First, there are no professional disaster relief teams. Second, the economic downturn has made disaster relief funds even more scarce. And third, there is a high degree of centralization of power and no local authority to respond to emergencies. The combination of these factors means that even though the floods are coming back every year, there is little room to improve this unfortunate situation in the future.